did good work today. This doesn't come easily to you, I know. Shouldn't come easily to anyone. But we mustn't allow our humanity to deter us from the work we're doing. You should get cleaned up. Get some sleep. Where are you going? I've got some business to attend to. Be all right out there by yourself? I won't be by myself. Be careful, Jacob. the sleep. You've been gone since last night. There was more to be done than I expected. You aren't going out again, are you? Not till dawn. Jacob thinks he knows where Malgard's box is hidden. If he's right, we may be able to finish the bastard off once and for all. Why you, Chris? There's nobody else left to do it. Malgard's taken the whole town. Then why don't we just go? And leave Jacob to fight this on his own? I can't do it. Jacob and I have been through too much together for me to run out on him now. But you've never fought one like Malgard before. He's not invincible. Smarter than most and more ruthless. But once we find him, we'll... Allison, what... Allison, what is it? Malgard was here. What? Yes. He was here, and he drank, and he made me drink of him. No. I'm his now, Chris. His forever. I can help you. Maybe we can find a way to... No. There's only one way now. I... I can't. I know you can't. Allison, no. No! I can help you. Maybe we can find a way. No. There's only one way now. One way now. One way
him alone, I trust. As instructed. These attendants will prepare you for the ceremony. Go with them. Sorry to disturb you, my lord. Come in, Stritch. Do you know what this is? It's a red cross, symbol of the Templars. Yes, the Templars. I carried this shield and this sword into many a battle. <clears throat> Was there something? Dr. Hogarth is here, my lord. Is he? He's being ready for the ceremony. You intend to go ahead with his initiation? You disapprove. There are others more worthy of the honor, my lord. Such as yourself? After all your years of faithful service, it is your right. It is your due. Is that it? Your time will come, Stritch, for now you're more useful to me as you are. As for Dr. Hogarth, he is important to me for another reason. The organization he founded, the Worldwide Church of the Future. His church is of little consequence. No, there's something else. Adrian Arlock. You've heard me speak of him. In his time, he was the most powerful of our kind to ever walk the earth. And the secret of his power was this, a golden amulet, the origins of which have long since been forgotten. An amulet which rendered Arlok invulnerable to the sun's rays. His reign lasted centuries, and when he met his end, it was assumed the amulet had been destroyed with him. But now Dr. Hogarth's agents have found it, and soon it will be in his possession. And in return for it, you're willing to grant him the gift of eternal life? So he believes. Come, let's not keep him waiting. Dr. Hogar, this is the night you were to have become one of us. That was our agreement, yes. Also part of our agreement was that you were to provide me with the amulet by now. Some unexpected complications have delayed my receipt of the item, considerably escalating the expense of this operation. Nothing could interest me less than a discussion of your expenses, Doctor. Yes, well, you'd be pleased to hear that I received the cable today from Professor Strogan my man on the scene. He has the amulet and is arranging to deliver it. I expect to have it by the end of the week. Ah, but by that time you will have become one of us. And as one of us, the amulet will be that much more valuable to you. What assurances do I have that you'll be willing to give it up? What assurance can I give you? You'll simply have to trust me. I like to believe I'm a trusting individual, Doctor. But I know you to be an ambitious man. I can easily imagine you, having become one of us, using the amulet to challenge my authority. No, I would never... Our covenant, like any organization, cannot function properly with two heads. And between the two of us, Doctor, there appears to be one head too many.
to Dr. Hogarth's church, the worldwide church of the future. And to the future he will sadly not live to see. The future of the worldwide coven of blood. find Hogarth's body back there and wonder what business you had with him. And? To find out, am I try to infiltrate the Church of the Future? An eventuality we must prepare ourselves for. Somebody did our job for us. Where'd you go? I saw two of them beating it out the back door. Get them? No. But guess who one of them was? Malgard. What would he be doing here? Taking care of this guy. Yeah, but why? nailed mount guard last night almost doesn't count what's this they're from n5's file jeff not here who's n5 i don't have a name on him yet one of his victims was brought in yesterday and she was able to give us a description so we had a composite worked up she survived the attack unusual no it's not we verified hundreds of attacks by N5 in places all over the country. 
and every time the victim survived. Well, he's not one of Malgard's creeps then. All their victims end up as necromorphs, and recruits for their coven. That's the odd thing. I cross-reference our files on Malgard with N5s. Look. N5 eventually shows up in whatever part of the country Malgard's in. If he's not in Malgard's coven, why is he following him around? Maybe for the same reason we do. Pleasant fantasy, isn't it? Fantasy, Dr. Slime? Yes, fantasy, Ms. Moore. The necromorph for the conscience? So guilt-ridden, he willingly assists us in ridding the world of his kind? Is that what you think you found? I think I... Blood, Miss Moore. That's what motivates a necromorph. Don't you think we should study him and find the reason for his behavior? This agency was not established to study these creatures, but to exterminate them. And N5 will be no exception. His latest victim has supplied us with information which has enabled us to pinpoint his hiding place. I've picked your squad for the assignment, Jeffrey. I want a raid scheduled within the week. Miss Moore. You had an appointment with the agency physician yesterday, an appointment you failed to keep. I was planning on rescheduling for later today. Please see that you do. You were a lot of help. I agree with them. N5's a necromorph, so we go after him regardless of his feeding habits. You're angry now? Yes. See you later. Don't forget to make that doctor's appointment. Just the guy I wanted to see. What do you got for me? Reports in the necromorphs we staked last night. Take a look at the one on top. Subject identified as Malcolm Hogarth, author, born New Jersey, 1935, blah, blah, blah. A reclusive multimillionaire, Hogarth controls an international media empire. In 1962, founded the Worldwide Church of the Future. Current registered membership, three million plus. An organization like that, I can see why Malgard would be interested. I know that Hogarth was easy to recruit. He's been into the occult for years, dabbling in witchcraft, Satanism. I'll bet he jumped at the chance to become a necromorph. So why'd Malgard end up killing him instead? Whatever happened, he's dead now. And Malgard's got his church. What does he plan to do with it? There's only one way to find out. Volunteering? Unless you can think of somebody better for the job. No, but Malgard's no fool. If he knows we're on to him, he'll be expecting us. I'll be careful. Let him make the final call. It all looks pretty conclusive to me. Dr. Jenkins, Agent Moore is waiting for you in your office. Thank you. Tell her I'll be right in. Sorry to keep you waiting, Caitlin. So, I'm afraid it isn't good news, Caitlin. It is what we thought it might be, only it's much further along than we had expected, and it's in an area that makes a surgical approach difficult. In addition to radiation treatments, there are some drugs that can slow the- How long do I have? Still bothering you? What did the doctor say? Kate? What? What did the doctor say was causing your headaches? I didn't see her. I had to cancel. Why? Something came up. What? Something. Look, get off my ass. You're not Sloan. I just think you should find out what's going on, that's all. I'm worried about you.
你是你。OK OK。must be new at this, so let me give you a piece of advice. When hunting one of my kind, it's best to do so while the sun is still up. I wasn't hunting you. I'm here because I need to speak to you. I have a proposal to make. What sort of proposal? One that could benefit both of us. Not joining me? No, of course not. You must be a courageous woman to risk coming here alone after sundown. I know you well enough to know that I wasn't taking much of a risk. And how is it that you know me so well? You're subject N5. The agency has an extensive file on you. Christian Gray. Sorry? My name. It's Christian Gray. I'm Caitlin Moore. A pleasure. Excuse me. I should get dressed. Mind if I ask you a question? Not at all. Why do you let your victims live? Shouldn't I? It's not a common practice among those of your kind. Usually victims of necromorphic attacks are drained of their blood and then become necromorphs themselves. Necromorph? Jacob's term, I'll bet. What? Nothing. But let's cut out this necromorph stuff. We've been known by another name for centuries. All right, you're a vampire. Better. And as a vampire, one would expect you to behave as other vampires do. Fortunately, I knew a little something about them before I joined the club. I knew, for instance, the corrupting effect blood can have on one's mind. The more you drink, the more it changes you, making you less human and more. More like Lord Malgard? That's one name we do know. And well, you should. As for me, I take from my prey only what I need to survive. To take any more would be to risk becoming less like the man I once was and more like the monster Malgard is. 
But enough about me. You said you had a proposal to make. As I've said, the agency's file on you is extensive. And by not killing your prey, you've left a very easy trail for us to follow. Now you even have my address. And a raid on this address is scheduled for sometime this week. I see. You need someone inside the agency. Someone who will warn you when you're in danger. You're offering to act as a spy for me? For a while, at least. As long as I can. I could use some fresh air. Why don't we go for a walk? Cold? No. You seem uncomfortable. I'm waiting to hear your answer to my proposal. You haven't said anything about it yet. I'm trying to imagine why you would make such an offer and what you would expect in return. There is something I'd want. And what would that be? I'm dying. I see. You're not the first, you know. You'd be surprised how many of my victims have begged me to grant them the gift of immortality. And you refuse them? Yes. Why? Because they didn't understand what they were asking for. Didn't understand the kind of life I lead. I think I do. Really? During my five years at the agency, I've made necromorphic behavior my special area of study. I was once like you. A hunter. Certain I understood my prey. But I didn't. I couldn't. Not that it mattered to Sloan. He didn't encourage understanding. Just a willingness to hunt down and destroy. You knew Sloan before you began? Oh, yes. In a way, I was the first NCA agent he ever trained. And look how I turned out. So your answer's no? I'm afraid so. Well, your luck's gonna run out sooner or later, you know. Without my help, the agency will get you eventually. And how long could you continue to offer that help? You wouldn't be able to stay on as an agent after you became a vampire. I mean, I assume they have rules against that sort of thing. And I guess I have nothing to offer. I was wrong to come to you. My mistake. Your mistake was assuming that my greatest concern would be self-preservation. My own survival matters very little to me. What does matter to you? Not much anymore. There was someone, once. Who? My wife, Allison. What happened to her? She made the mistake of trusting me to protect her. I let her fall into Malgard's hands. Now she exists as a... That's why you've been following him? waiting for the chance to destroy him. Then there is something I can offer you. With the access I have to the agency databanks, I can help you get Malgard. I haven't dined yet this evening. I'd like you to join me. There's nothing you could show me that would change my mind. We'll see.
Show over. What? Here, clean yourself up. You really thought the sight of a little blood would send me running? I was trying to show you what I am. You were trying to scare me off. I don't scare that easily. Now I've made an offer. What's your answer? As long as you understand what you're getting into. Yes. Once Malgard has been destroyed, and Alice and Soul freed. I'll do as you ask. It was when news reached Baldwin II that pilgrims en route to the holy city were being ravaged by blood-drinking demons that he dispatched us, his loyal knights, to the site of the attacks. We never arrived. Midway through our journey, we were set upon by the very demons we had been sent to vanquish. The attack came one night while we slept, and before the dawn of the next day, each member of our group had been initiated into the ranks of the undead. Those creatures whose kiss had changed us so profoundly were the forerunners of our kind. Primitive. Unaware of the true potential of their powers. As superstitious as those they fed upon. Cringing like credulous fools at the sight of the cross. But as for us, before joining the Templars, we had been noblemen, poor and landless perhaps, but not lacking in ambition. We immediately saw the potential of our new abilities, and soon the Templars, under our direction, had become the center of a web of power that reached to every corner of the known world. The Kingdom of the Night might have been established then and there, but as it was, the Templar's base of power was destroyed, and of the group of immortals that controlled the Order, I was the sole survivor. Only now, after a struggle of many centuries, have I finally been returned to my rightful position. Looking out over those who will soon live to serve me and my kind. But there are still those who seek to thwart me. Jacob Sloan is one. But there is another who poses an even greater threat. I'm sure you know to whom I'm referring. Yes, I do. We must eliminate him. And in order to do that, we must first lure him to us. I understand. Ah, Stritch. Any word on Professor Strogan? I spoke with him by phone a few minutes ago. He'll be arriving the night of the 6th. I told him he'd be met at the airport and brought directly here to hand the amulet over to Dr. Hover. Of course, he's never actually met the good doctor before. So I should do nicely in his place. Thank you, Stritch. There was one other thing, my lord. I think you should have a look at this. It's a questionnaire the church members are asked to complete. Carla Myers. Who is she? She came into one of our emergency help centers a few hours ago, claiming to be on the verge of suicide. Hundreds of such wretches make their way to our help centers every day. What has raised your suspicions about her? Her responses on the test are almost perfect, as if someone had devised the ideal psychological profile for church membership. The infiltrator we've been expecting? Possibly. Where is she? Welcome 
to the worldwide church of the future. Won't you join us in the future? What is wrong with your brain? Why can't you feel the way you want? Live the way you want? The answer is all in your mind. It is your mind that prevents you from being you you long to be. Don't your counselor will be with you in a moment. In the meantime, why don't you take this? Are we loved? Do we what is it? Ourselves? Something to help you feel better. We know ourselves. All these doubts and fears make us unable to deal with the pressures of modern living. But there is hope. 25 years ago, Dr. Malcolm Hogarth, renowned writer and commentator, turned his attention to documenting the rise of a new vision. His book, Mind Power, laid out the philosophy of what has developed into a worldwide movement of enlightened forward lookers. Their quest to learn more about themselves and more about the universe we share led them to the realization of certain basic truths. Truths which can help guide anyone to a better, happier life, a more fulfilled existence. Our counselors will take you step by step through the intensive program Dr. Hogarth developed to help you discover who you are and what you have the potential to become. The Worldwide Church of the Future. All you join us in the future. You. That's the composite of N5 we supplied to NYPD. Yeah, that's him. Are you sure? Yeah. And what was he wearing? He was in black. The girl was wearing black, too. What girl? I don't know. When I came to, there was this girl standing there, and he was talking to her. She was in black coveralls, like. Can you describe? Black coveralls. Standard issue for NCA field agents. You think the woman she saw was one of our agents? Come on, Jack. What do you think? Well, I think it's possible to wear black coveralls without being an NCA agent. I think you better tell Sloan about this. It'll be in the report. And maybe we should move up the raid. If N5 keeps leaving victims around as talkative as this one, it's only a matter of time before the media gets a story. You're right. Tomorrow? Yeah. Get everything ready. Hi, right, Caitlin. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? Okay. Did you see the doctor today? This morning. What did she say? She said I've just been working too hard. Stress, you know. Well, I'm glad to hear it's nothing serious. I didn't think it would be. <sighs> so, I get off work in an hour. Do you want to... I can't. I just have a lot of stuff I need to take care of. You sure you're okay? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I'd tell you if I wasn't, wouldn't I? I hope so. Chris! Chris! What is it? We have to get you out of here. Tonight.
This is very nice. Sorry we couldn't bring your box. You gonna be okay without it? I can rest any place that's safe from the sun. Well, if that's true, why do you need a coffin in the first place? They're surprisingly comfortable. Well, I have something here. I don't know how comfortable it is, but... A body bag. My size, too. It'll do for the time being. It's better than sleeping in the linen closet anyway. I'm afraid I have to leave you for a while. Going out? As I must every evening. Nobody home. How the hell did he know we were coming? Well, this guy doesn't usually stay too long in any one place. Maybe he just decided it was time to move on. Then why would he leave his coffin behind? No, he left here in a hurry. Well, he took the time to do some tidying up. What? No prints. It's been wiped clean. Bottle's clean, too. Why would he bother trying to hide his prints? He's got to know we already have them. Maybe there was somebody else here. Somebody he didn't want us to know about. Like who? Like the lady in the black coveralls? What could she have been doing here? And while well, you're trying to figure that one out, answer this one. What the hell is this doing here? Chris, is that you? Yes, Allison. Slept through the whole day again. Yes, it's getting to be a bad habit. I thought I heard a shout before. Scary dreams. I've been having some weird ones myself lately. What's this? Stuff I picked up at headquarters today. Ever hear of the Worldwide Church of the Future? Never been much of a churchgoer. This isn't much of a church. It was started by Dr. Malcolm Hogarth as a tax dodge, a way to keep the IRS from getting at the money he was making as an author. You're chasing tax cheats now? Hogarth's body turned up recently during a raid at one of Malgard's hideouts. He was all dressed up for his initiation into the coven, but some unkind person lopped his head off instead. Mm, that is interesting. And how has his death affected his church? Not at all, as far as we can tell. 
Of course, the agency did keep the discovery of his body quiet, and Hogarth was a recluse, but still. One would expect someone to notice his absence. One would. Unless someone else has stepped in to fill the gap. That's the assumption we're working on. Mm. Just how large is this church of the future? A couple of million members worldwide. And they have plenty of money, too. Mostly from the sale of Hogarth's self-help books. They also run centers where people can go and speak with counselors trained in church teachings, usually ending up as new recruits for the church. Or now, perhaps, from Algard's coven. He's been working to increase the ranks of his followers for centuries. His plan is to raise an army large enough to force the mortal population into subjugation. In the world he envisions, mortals will exist as livestock, to be bred and slaughtered as needed. Ambitious, isn't he? Mm. And this organization might be just what he needs to realize his ambitions. Dr. Sloan, you're up late. I just received some disturbing news. A squad of four of our agents was ambushed during a raid tonight. Survivors? How did they know they were going to be raided? The same way N5 knew to expect your raid earlier today. Someone leaked the information. Someone in the agency? The same individual who left this at N5's hideout. Agent Reese brought this to me. He thought you might forget to mention it in your report, as indeed you did. You went out of your way to conceal important evidence. Why? Because you feared it might incriminate someone close to you? What reason would any agent of ours have for helping N5? What if the agent in question knew she only had a few months to live? I spoke with Dr. Jenkins earlier today. Caitlin was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. She'll be dead in six months. That's why she sought out N5. She's made a deal with him, revealing agency secrets in return for life. Did she report in today, Jeffrey? Did she report in to work today? She was in this afternoon. And she hasn't yet become one of them. Tomorrow morning, you and Agent Reese will go to her home and take her into custody. If N5 is there, he's to be destroyed in the usual manner. I know all this must come as a shock to you, Jeffrey, but we all have our duties to perform. I hope I can rely on you. Good. Sloan gave Agent Burke instructions to destroy him in the usual manner. Excellent. Sloan's agents will eliminate Gray Forest. All we need to do is wait. And give Sloan the satisfaction of destroying one of our kind? No. We will deal with Gray in our own way. And Agent Moore, what about her? If she is so anxious to join the legions of the night, why should we not accommodate her? This must have been Hogarth's office. Now Malgard's no doubt. It takes up the top floor of the building. Only accessible by private elevator. Maybe we should go over this later. After I return. You can't go out. Why not? I just don't think it's a good idea. When I was talking to Jeff today, I could tell he suspected something. Who's Jeff? Just another agent. But if I'm right, and he did suspect me, he might mention it to Sloan. Who might decide to place your house under surveillance. Right. I'm afraid I still have to go out, no matter what the risk. Why? The hunger increases the longer I go without. If I let it grow too strong, I might not be able to control myself. Then there's only one thing to do. Take what you need from me. Your illness has made you weak enough. You can't afford to lose any blood. I can't afford to lose you.
happened. I told you you weren't up to donating blood. How long was I out? Not too long. Best sleep I've had in a while. And some good dreams, too, from what I could tell. You sure this Jeff is just another agent? Why? You called out his name. Did I? Several times. Apparently, he fills a somewhat more important role in your life than your previous comment would suggest. He did. But that life is coming to an end very soon, isn't it? And there's no way you can be part of my next life. How does it happen exactly? I thought you were an expert on necromorphic behavior. Not as much as you are. When the time comes, I'll drain your body of its blood. You'll lay dead for a day and rise again the following night. And afterwards? Afterwards. Well, you've spent the last decade or so by yourself. Not by choice. I know, but you wouldn't want to continue being alone, would you? I haven't made any plans. Well, the reason I ask is I don't want to be alone. I suppose there's no reason for either of us to be alone. Not anymore. Get the hell away from her, you bastard. Get away from her. Jeff, what are you doing? What am I doing? You can stand there with that leech hanging on you and ask me what I'm doing? Put the crossbow down and we'll talk. Talk about what? You're a traitor. To the agency. And to me. You don't understand. Oh, yes. I do. It's hard enough knowing that I'm going to lose you. Knowing there's nothing I can do about it. But I won't lose you to him. That I can do something about. Jeff, please! I'm free of him, Chris. Free of Malgard. He fears you, Chris. Fears you more than anyone else. Why? Because you can resist him. No one else has been able to. I wasn't. At first. He planned to use me to get to you. But the more I heard him talk about what a threat you are, the more I realized how much I still love you. I began to think that if you could resist him, then maybe I could resist him too. And then maybe Maybe we could be together again. Allison, Malgard isn't going to just let us walk off into the moonlight together. We could get away from him. Far away to some place beyond his reach. There is no such place. He has to be destroyed. Then we'll destroy him. I can take you to him, get you into his office. But it has to be tonight. Why tonight? There's a man coming tonight to deliver some sort of charm. Malgard said its power will make him invincible. A charm? It belonged to a master vampire who lived centuries ago. Arlock. Adrian Arlock. You know what she's talking about? I'm afraid I do. Reese here. Hi, Kaylin. What's up? 
now? Or whatever it is, can I wait to, hello? Hello? Well, Scott should be here soon, so you won't be tied up for long. I can't believe you're doing this, Kate. What choice do I have? Maybe you think I'd be better off dead, but crazy me, I want to live. But you won't be alive. You'll just be a walking corpse feeding off the living. You're wrong, Jeff. I'll hunt that corpse down, you know, and destroy it. I won't let it go just because... Just because it looks like the woman I used to love. Thanks for warning me. When did this call come in? Just a minute ago. She said Jeff was at her house and needed to see me right away. She said Jeffrey was there? You stay here. I'll go. Believe her? Think she's freed herself from Malgard? Malgard didn't just make her a vampire. He fed her blood from his own veins. He's a part of her. That can never be changed. So she's leading us into a trap? Yes. Why are we walking into it? Arlok's amulet. The charm she mentioned. The vampire who possesses it is protected against the sun's rays. If Malgard gets a hold of it, Time to go. They're on their way. Stretch to well. Guests are en route. Are you in position? Yes, sir. We're uh, ready for them. Everything is ready, my lord. And it should be just about time for. Ah, here he is now. Professor Strogan. We were expecting you. Uh, I'm here to see Dr. Hogarth. Right this way. Good evening, Professor. I understand you have something for me. supremacy over day as I have over night. Anything I can do? Carla. <laughs> Thank Christ. Get over here and untie me. It doesn't look very comfortable. You're right, it isn't. You know, if these ropes were any tighter, they might even draw blood. Ow! What the hell are you doing? <sighs> Stop screwing around and untie. No. I don't think so. I think I'm going to leave you just the way you are. Mm. I like you like this. Oh, your heart's pounding. Uh. Feels good. All that blood, 
pulsing through your body. Pounding inside of you. That's what I want. That's what I need. <laughs> It would appear Agent Myers went further undercover than was planned. We must have found her out somehow. Yes. Caitlin keeps no secrets from them, it seems. Where's she now, by the way? She left with N5. Any idea where they were going? Here. They're headed to find Malgard to destroy him. How do you know that? I heard them say it. They let you hear them, hoping to lead you into a trap. Anything they wanted to do to me, they could have done right here. It's not just you they want. They're hoping you'll bring a few squads of your fellow agents along with you. We have to go after them. We'll raid the place with every agent we have, but we'll do it tomorrow, by the light of day. By then, it'll be too late. Jeff. You're still under my command, Agent Burke! Jeffrey, wait! Jeffrey! Jeffrey, be reasonable. You can't handle this by yourself. You're right. I could use your help. According to these notations, Melgard's taken over Hogarth's office. Where's that? Top floor, accessible by private elevator. That'll be my first stop. You know, you're rushing into something you can't possibly handle. And all for the sake of someone who may already be beyond our help. You can't understand, Jacob. You've never lost anyone to them. Have you? There's a student of mine years ago, who I took on as my assistant. He met a young woman. Against my advice, he married her. I warned him. Malgard often struck at his enemies through those closest to them, that he might try to get at us through Allison. That's just what happened. Malgard waited. And when the opportunity presented itself, he acted, taking her as his own. She, in turn, attacked her husband. For days afterwards, I searched for them so that I could put them to final rest, but I could never find them. And one night, he came to me. He begged me to understand that he was different. Able to resist the impulses those in Malgard's coven so readily gave themselves up to. I couldn't bring myself to destroy him, but I refused to believe what he was telling me. Why? If it were true, then what of all the necromorphs I destroyed in my lifetime? How many might have been like him? No, it was all a lie. He'd been sent by Malgar to deceive me. This former assistant of yours. It's N5, isn't it? N5's the thing he's become. The man I knew died years ago. Maybe Caitlin was right about no, it. Maybe... No, no. We mustn't doubt our mission. They're evil. That's that simple. All of them evil. They must be wiped out. You understand that, don't you? getting past them. And if we try, the whole building's gonna know we're here. There's an unguarded entrance run back.
That's the signal. for the three of us. This is it. This is the chance you've been waiting for. What I've been waiting for is a chance to finally free my wife, to put her soul to rest. And now I have that chance. You can't. This time I can. They have destroyed her. Are you certain? Just can't understand how this could happen. I arranged everything according to your instructions. Then why are our enemies now roaming free through the building? I'll go down and take care of them myself. An excellent idea. Better go in alone. You said you need my help. I know. But there's no sense in both of us taking the risk. Mrs. Sloan. I'm sorry. No need to be. She's free now. She wasn't taking us to her leader? Malgard isn't in there. But I do sense his presence nearby. Your master's plan failed, Stritch. Did it. You're here, aren't you? But you've paid for my presence. The Coven has many members, all of whom are ready to sacrifice themselves for our Lord Margard. And you? Are you ready to sacrifice yourself? Where's Malgard? I'll never betray. My lord. There's no point trying to resist. I can control your mind as easily as he can. No lies now. Where is he? Upstairs. On the roof. What would he be doing up there? Waiting. Waiting for what? For the sun. The amulet. You must have it already. I think I'll join your master. I have some things to discuss with him. Meanwhile, why don't you wait in his office?
Well done. Your master should be pleased. Which would you rather see on the ground before you? Your weapon or her head? Throw it down. Take it away. Now kneel. Kneel! It was foolish of you to come here, but I'm glad you did. With Arlok's amulet in my possession, I have but one piece of unfinished business to attend to. Your elimination. You're not going to try to recruit me for your coven? That would not be wise. You see, there are others among us like you. Others who spare the victim's lives and see themselves as more mortal than immortal. It is a manageable group at the present, but with the right leader? No. I realized long ago there could be only one fate for you. That's for you, my dear. I understand you wish to become one of us. Tonight, your wish will be fulfilled. Before he meets his end, your friend will be allowed the honor of witnessing your induction into the Coven of Blood. I'll brook no interference from you. Why must you anger me with your resistance? Can't you see it is pointless? You're mine now. No! Yes. Mine to control. Mine to cherish or crush as I choose. We got here as soon as we could. The rest of the squad's on its way. We can't wait for them. You men are ready? Let's go. Good. 
your master is pleased. Now for your reward. Remain here, my child. Very well, my friend. Since you find your present existence so unbearable, I will do you the courtesy of ending it. <laughs> Who to shoot first? What a dilemma! Jack? <laughs> 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 She's dead. Is she? You intend to use that? Go. Get out of here. Sloan will destroy her, you know, if he finds her here. Take her. Sloan, look at this. Jeffrey, where are they? Jeffrey? I'm sorry to hear you leaving, man. Thanks. So what are you gonna do? Any plans? I'm gonna... buy some new clothes.
But I had to see you. One last time. One last time. Thank you. Dark night.